First of all, I have to say is what a privilege and an honor to do this tonight. But as I look out, I say, why not you, Mark Danaher? Are you Kelly or McLaughlin? Are you even Bill Ennis? Why me? I never met Bishop Hurley, but I always admired him, as I said. He was a product of his generation, bold and determined to prove his loyalty to God and his country. I've listened to stories over and over again from all the Monsignors, from Manny to Dave Page to McKeever to Enright to Barry to Cavalry to Brian Walsh and many others about Archbishop Hurley. But tonight I will try to discover who Joseph P. Hurley, the man, his family, his life, and try to reflect on why he became such a great visionary leader here in Florida. His Episcopal motto helps to kind of understand him. Virtus in artis. Virtue in the midst of difficulty. But as some of his best friends said, he often quoted, it was steadfastness in the midst of poor leadership. Monsignor Dave Page recently said to me, and he wrote an article about Archbishop Hurley, who he knew and worked with as editor of the Florida Catholic. He said, I feel that Archbishop Hurley is the forgotten and visionary leader of the Catholic Church in Florida. But to speak of forgotten and visionary leader in the same sentence seems a contradiction. But in the case of Archbishop Hurley and other historical figures, it seems a common trait that history is sometimes ignored and even forgotten. It is said of those who do not learn history, or they are doomed to repeat. When we forget history, we forget the past and the lessons learned from great people like Archbishop Hurley. Therefore, we are doomed to commit the same mistakes over and over again. But today we come, we come to remember and pay tribute to Archbishop Joseph P. Hurley, a historian in his own right, who even despite his mistakes, he was always right. <laughs> we come in prayer, we come in gratitude for all his great achievements, for the church in Florida, the service he gave the Vatican, the Secretary of State's office in India, Japan, Yugoslavia, were exemplary during very difficult times. What kind of man was Archbishop Hurley? Yes, he was disciplined, he was creative, he was passionate, a man of strength, knowledge, duty, honor, truth, wisdom, and above all, a man of the church with a deep faith and love for God. He was a man who embraced God's principles of freedom, justice, and dignity of each person. Archbishop Hurley can be described as a leader who knew history and made history in the church in Florida and in the world, pre-World War II and post-World War II. He served the Diocese of St. Augustine for 27 years, the longest serving bishop in the history of the church in Florida. Joseph P. Hurley was born, born in Cleveland in 1894, to Michael and Ann Hurley. He was the middle child of nine children. His parents were recent immigrants from Ireland, having suffered the effects of the post-famine period. Ireland had become an exhausted, dispirited and divided country. Nationalism grew and began to seek independence from Britain. And tenant farmers were being evicted from their lands and there was no hope of a future. 
This was the Ireland that the Hurleys left and immigrated out of desperation and hope for the future. Millions of people left Ireland in fear of starvation and death. America became their only home. The Hurleys came to Cleveland, where their children grew up in the neighbourhood of recent Irish immigrants. These families shared common bonds of faith, of culture, and a solid work ethic to prove for their family, to provide for their families. His father worked in the steel mills and later worked for a gas company. His mother took a job as a laundress and his older brothers and sisters got jobs to help the family make it. Joseph went to local Catholic elementary school. And during this time, Catholics were the minority. They were all immigrants. Their Catholic faith and loyalty to the government and state was always under suspect. So much so even that Cardinal Gibbons of Baltimore said, next to God, country should have the strongest place in a man's affection. Religious persecution was nothing new to the Hurleys. Archbishop's parents had experienced it in Ireland. The Hurley family were determined not to give up their faith. Their children would go to local Catholic schools. And Catholic schools were being opened to fulfill the needs of the recent Catholic immigrants. Joseph Hurley never forgot the role of education. Catholic education played in his life. In fact, I heard once from, Archbishop, from Monsignor Jeremiah Mahoney, he told a wonderful story when Hurley came to St. Edwards in Palm Beach, the people were grumbling about the recent immigrants. And the next Sunday he came back and he invited all the immigrants from Immokalee and surrounding areas and they had their first communion in St. Edwards in Palm Beach. <laughs> all the parishes he founded in Florida had to have a school. He was determined because he saw the benefits and the gifts it was to him. He later attended the Jesuit high school and college. He heard about Ignatius Loyola, the soldier who became the founder of the Jesuits. And if you know the Jesuit motto, ad miorum de gloria, for the greater glory of God, which was the response of the first Jesuits to Ignatius' command in 1541, ignum mitere in terram which means go and light the world on fire. So Joseph E. Hurley knew and believed that he was gifted. Some say that Joseph Hurley went out to light the world on fire. Academically, he was bright and very competitive by nature. He was president of the debating society and the commencement speaker at his graduation. And guess what? His speech was the dawn of a new era. And did we hear that over and over again in every place in Florida? It was the dawn of a new era. He loved sports. He played football, but his favorite sport was boxing. His whole life was tainted with his boyhood dreams of martial valor. He first deployed to West Point and we heard to his disappointment that he didn't get in. His second goal was to go to law school, but tragedy struck the Hurley family when his mother was killed in a trolley accident. He then realized that going to law school would be financially impossible for his family. He sought the advice of his pastor who told him he was intelligent and had a solid faith and would make an excellent priest. Would he consider it? Joseph P. Hurley's life was steeped in faith and trust in God. It was at this time that he realized that this was what God wanted him to do. Everything fell into place once he began his studies for the priesthood. It was in December that he met uh, Father Mooney, his professor, who would later become Cardinal Mooney of Detroit. Mooney would become a lifelong friend and his mentor, Hurley saw and admired Mooney's intelligence, his courage and principles, especially in dealing in diplomatic and political circles. Charles Gallagher, in his book, Vatican Secret Diplomat, wrote about Hurley. 
Hurley stands out as a broadcaster of realities, a forecaster of truth, and a man of moral courage. When it came to his intelligence or efficiency, he did not suffer fools easily, and he was often quoted, as Archbishop said, I'm surrounded by fools. The late Monsignor McNulty, his loyal secretary, said, when he made up his mind, he was always right, and he was always in charge. He loved substance, and he cried out for preservation of the faith. He became the most powerful voice to speak out against Nazism and Hitler. He wrote many articles and also gave a national speech on CBS radio on July 6, 1941 condemning Hitler and concentration camps. He was the first bishop in the US to speak condemning all sorts of atrocities in the, these camps. After the war, he spoke out against communism and his persecution of the church and the imprisoning of priests and nuns. During his diplomatic days, he valued and treasured his relationship with US diplomats for information they provided, which later helped him in purchasing and developing properties in Florida. He would use governmental maps, information and demographics and population growth to locate viable sites. Archbishop Hurley, his incredible legacy to every bishop and diocese in Florida, is the properties he left for future development. In the Diocese of Orlando, all nine schools and parishes in Brevard County Owe, his exist owe their existence to his foresight. The purchase of San Pedro, 500 acres in central Orlando, which is now a retreat house. Recently, I discovered in the archives in his handwritten note, drawn out the property, the names of the people that were to buy it from and how much they were to pay. That was the details of this man. On his last trip to Rome in 1967, he, he attended the International Synod of Bishops. It was announced that the Primate of Warsaw, Cardinal Wazinski, was refused permission to leave by the Communist government. Then, Car then Cardinal Karwatiwa refused to attend in solidarity with Cardinal Wazinski. To Bishop Charlie's delight, he wrote in his diary that day, the power of Catholic Poland is alive and well. And then he finished the note with these very prophetic words. He said, Poland, Catholic Poland, will break the teeth of communism, will win over Russia. Pity he didn't live to see Cardinal Watiwa become John Paul II. William F. Buckley said of Hurley that he was among the most adamant and outspoken critics of communism in the United States since he knew firsthand its potential for evil. Father Charles Gallagher mentions in his book one of Hurley's greatest achievements in Yugoslavia was underappreciated by both the US government and the church. His use of diplomacy in Yugoslavia, but also his use of honor and his use of determination. His support of Cardinal Stefanik was a support to Yugoslav bishops to help them in their morale. It headed off splintering of the clergy, kept Yugoslavia Catholicism from succumbing to a state-sponsored hybrid church. The establishment of a national church would have confused the faithful, fractured unity, and set up the church in, Pol in, in Yugoslavia for failure. During Vatican II, most of the secretaries who went to Rome with him said the Yugoslav bishops always treated Archbishop Hurley with so much graciousness and honour in gratitude for all his works. Our presence at bishops this evening in the Cathedral of St. Augustine is to remind us all that Joseph P. Hurley is not a forgotten person of history, but a visionary leader. We pay tribute to him. Archbishop McDonough on November 3rd in his homily here in this church said, history will record him as a most unusual man, brilliant son of the church and generous in his work for the Lord, 
Perhaps and hopefully historians will give him the niche that he rightly deserves. These are our prayers and wishes too, that this great man will not be forgotten, but be remembered forever. Tonight we remember him and we pray for him because he has left us the greatest legacy of all. I have to finish with the legends and the greatest legends are from you, the priests. I hear them over and over again and the worst assignments any priest could ever receive was to become the archbishop's driver. <laughs> I heard from Bishop Larkin, I heard from Monsignor Cavalry, and I could go on with a list. Everybody had their way of getting out of the job. But some of the greatest stories was that you were told that you would go up to a light, stop the car, and say to the Archbishop, what color is the light? And the Archbishop would probably say, why are you asking? He said, well, Archbishop, I'm color blind. But tonight, we come with gratitude, with prayers for a man who truly loved God, loved the church, and gave so much. And like Archbishop MacDonough, we hope and pray, not only that he receives his eternal rewards, but as we heard from Job, not that it was written in stone, but his legacy, his valor, his determination, his love, and his faith is written not just in the minds and hearts, but in the very soul of every parish that exists here in Florida. Because somehow Joseph P. Hurley left his mark, not just here in St. Augustine, but in every parish in the whole state of Florida. So today we thank him and we pray for him that he may continue to be with us in spirit. Amen.